Hello and welcome to Helix Review's most anticipated movies of 2021. As I count down these movies, not only am I going to explain why I'm excited to see them, but I'm also going to have a prediction about each one. Starting off the top 10, with number 10 we have Halloween Kills. Halloween is uh, as not a big fan of slasher movies, particularly Halloween is probably my favorite slasher franchise. Uh, the first Halloween movie is absolutely fantastic, and the latest Halloween movie is really good as well. And there's a couple in the middle there that are pretty decent, and there's some in the middle there that are pretty terrible as well. But I enjoy Halloween as a franchise, and I like where it seems like they're kind of going with this new Halloween series. I hope this new one's good, and it seems like they're they're try trying to just make this a trilogy. You know, they got Halloween Kills, and then Halloween Dies, I think, is the, the following year. So it seems like they have a story in mind for Michael Myers, and for Laurie Strode and all these characters that they're going to just make a whole trilogy about here. And I'm excited to see where that goes and, and what we're doing here with the Halloween franchise now that it's back to being good, you know? So I'm going to predict that Halloween Kills is going to end with Michael Myers winning or at least seemingly winning, which is going to lead up to the real ending in Halloween Ends. That's what it's called. Halloween ends, not Halloween dies. So my prediction for Halloween kills is Michael Myers is going to win this one. And that's, that's, it's going to be crazy because he hasn't won one yet, actually. He killed a ton of people, but he hasn't won in a movie yet, uh, permanently anyway. Uh, <laughs> number nine, I got Don't Breathe 2. It's getting a sequel after all these years. It's been so long. I, I just kind of thought it wasn't getting a sequel at this point. But Don't Breathe is getting a sequel. The My main issue is Fetty Alvarez, the director of the original, is not returning to direct this one. It's being directed by a first-time director. And, I, I mean, I hope, we get, I hope he gets it right. Uh, but, you know, Fetty Alvarez did such a great job with that first one, just making it so tension-filled, ramping up that tension throughout. If this becomes a slasher movie franchise, this could potentially be my favorite slasher movie franchise. But, uh, you know, with new time directors coming on here, it could be good, it could be bad, we just don't know, right? So hopefully it's great, but I am going to predict that this is going to fall into, like, the typical downfalls of a sequel, a slasher sequel, meaning that it's going to just be, like, too much of a rehash of the first movie and just not nearly be as good and just kind of, you know, lose the spirit of the original movie. That's my prediction for Don't Breathe 2, but that is certainly not my hope because I, I really hope that this is great because, man, that, that first Don't Breathe, so fantastic, so fantastic. Uh, number eight, we got The King's Man, the Kingsman sequel, no, not sequel, spinoff origin story for The Kingsman, The King's Man, also directed by Matthew Vaughn, one of my favorite directors. I love that guy, such a fantastic director. This one, it seems like he's taking some of his modern uh, fast-paced, wacky kind of sensibilities and applying it to the the kind of period piece that this is in a way that I think could be incredibly fun. My prediction is that by the end of the year, not only will there be a sequel to this movie announced, but also a sequel, but also a Statesman movie which was the the people that were introduced in Kingsman 2. So that's my prediction, is that they're really going to try to uh, be expanding out the Kingsman cinematic universe, which they're kind of trying to create here. They have said that they're trying to create like a cinematic universe. So my prediction basically is that this is going to be successful enough that they're going to be moving forward with it, with the sequels to this, sequels to the main series, and a sequel, not a sequel, but an actual Statesman movie, which I would love. I would love to see all of those things because I love Matthew Vaughn, his directing style, and I love this franchise, man. It's just so wacky and fun, you know what I'm saying? Number seven, I got a movie that came out a few years ago, uh, Justice League, but this one is the Snyder Cut. I'm the Justice League, Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League, going to be coming to HBO Max, potentially to theaters. I've heard a rumor, like a, on the rumor mill or whatever, that it might be coming to theaters as well. If it does, I'll be going to theaters to watch this four-hour movie or however long this thing is going to be. But I am so excited to see this. I 
I enjoyed Justice League enough. I enjoyed it, but uh, honestly, I really loved Man of Steel. I liked Batman v Superman, which is when when the studios were really kind of trying to hack at him a little bit, and then uh, you know that kind of messed that movie up a little bit, in my opinion. And then Justice League, they were really messing with him. And then he, what, he left halfway through and somebody else came in and directed the rest, Joss Whedon. And it's like, it it was just, it was kind of a mess. I enjoyed Justice League because of some of the characters and things, but it was a mess. And I really want to see Zack Snyder's vision. I think Zack Snyder is an underrated, fantastic director, and I want to see his vision of Justice League, and I'm extremely excited that we're finally getting to see the Snyder Cut, this thing that people have been campaigning about for years, but I I honestly, I never thought this was going to happen, and if it wasn't for the coronavirus, I don't know that it would have happened, you know, because everybody's stuck in their homes due to, you know, government overreach and all this kind of stuff, and so it's like, oh, now we can we can take these things that we already have and actually kind of build this movie that people want to see without having to go out and film too much more. I think they ended up going and filming some more stuff for the Snyder Cut. But either way, dude, I am extremely, extremely excited for the Snyder Cut of Justice League. My prediction is that I'm going to like this better than the theatrical cut, but general audiences slash reviewers and people will more or less have about the same reaction as they did about Justice League originally, which is like, yeah, it's okay, it's it's decent, it's fun enough or whatever, but it's not great. That's, honestly, that's, that's kind of where I think a lot of the reaction is going to end up being for the Snyder Cut, but I think I'm going to love it. I think I'm going to like this way more than the <laughs> real version or the theatrical version, let's say, of Justice League. Uh, number six. Black Widow. Man, it seems like this movie should have come out ages ago, but, I mean, that's that's the case with 2020 and all that, I guess. Uh, this movie looks great. Scarlett Johansson finally, you know, getting her own movie, being Black Widow for so long. Now she finally gets to have, you know, the Black Widow movie, and it looks great. It looks cool. I really think this should have come out before Endgame, but it, it looks cool, and I, I can't wait to see it. I, I love some of the stuff they're building in here. I think, you know, David Harbour looks really interesting in here. Uh, what's his name? Florence Plur? I don't remember her name exactly. I remember it's spelt very odd and I don't know how to say her last name, but the girl that's the other, like Black Widow's sister, almost kind of, uh, her comrade in arms or whatever, the other Black Widow that seems to be a main character in the movie looks very interesting. She's a good actress as well. So I'm, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with her. My prediction is that, David Harbour, a.k.a. the Red Guardian, is actually going to be the real villain of the movie and not Taskmaster. Taskmaster is set up as the main villain, and he looks cool. I like I like Taskmaster as a villain and stuff, and so I I think him in a team-up movie would be better be, to, to show off all the different things that he knows how to do and all that kind of stuff. But putting that aside, Taskmaster is really cool, and he's a villain in the movie for sure, but my prediction is that David Harbour's character that the Red Guardian is going to be the real villain of the movie. They're kind of playing him up as the hero or as a good guy in the movie, but I I think he's going to be the real villain of the movie, ultimately, when it comes down to it. Also, I predict that uh, her death in Avengers Endgame would have been way more impactful had this movie come out first instead of two years later, because it's freaking stupid. Uh, Anyway. (laughs) Number five. We got Morbius, the living vampire, as it should be called, but it's not. Morbius, uh, this character is great. I love this character in the comics, and I am very excited to see what they do with him in the movies. Jared Leto, I think, is an interesting choice to play the character, and I think there's a lot of potential for an extremely cool movie here, and I'm excited. I think the trailers look great. I think it looks great. I, I can't wait for Morbius. I loved Venom. I, I loved Venom. I thought that was awesome. And, uh, you know, I know it kind of had somewhat mixed reviews, but I, I thought it was awesome. And so more in that vein, more in that Sony Marvel universe, whatever they're cooking up there. Yes, please. I'm on board. <laughs> I love Morbius. Morbius is a cool character. My prediction is that Venom and Slash or Spider-Man is going to have a cameo in this movie, kind of expanding out that you know, Sony, Marvel, Spider-Man universe kind of thing even more. Uh, So that's my prediction. We'll see if it happens. We already know that uh, 
that the vulture is going to be appearing in there, you know. I don't know if that'll just be a cameo or what that'll be, but that's that's interesting. Uh, number four, The Suicide Squad. Okay, James Gunn directing The Suicide Squad, taking over for David Ayer. Uh, I, I enjoyed the first Suicide Squad. The extended cut, by the way, is better than the theatrical cut of Suicide Squad. That said, release the Ayer cut, because I do want to see David Ayer's real cut of Suicide Squad, much like we're going to see the real cut of Justice League. I'm extremely, I'm extremely excited for that, and I, I hope that that... I hope that the success of the the Snyder Cut, assuming it's a success, is enough to, to push Warner Brothers into making the air cut of, of Suicide Squad. Anyway, I enjoyed Suicide Squad because it got some of the characters right and did some cool things with that. This movie, hopefully it does that, but also gives us a better story, tightens some things up, and, and gives us some better writing and some things that were messy about that first movie movie. The Suicide Squad is huge in this movie. Like, counting the members, there's like 16 confirmed Suicide Squad members with some high-profile actors in here that are in unnamed roles, like Sylvester Stallone, Taika Waititi are in here, and just, you know, we don't know what they're doing in this movie, but they're in this movie, uh, which is awesome. By the Sylvester Stallone's in here? Yes, that's cool. That's so weird. Uh, So my prediction is is that only five members of the Suicide Squad will survive. So, cutting it down from 16 to 5. Because I think people are going to be dying all over the place. There's people dying on the ceiling. There's people dying in your attic. There's people dying everywhere in this movie. Uh, They're going to live up to the name the Suicide Squad. This is my prediction of the five people that's going to survive. So, number one, Harley Quinn. Obviously, DC is not going to kill off Harley Quinn. It's just not going to happen, at least not this soon. Uh, number two, Rick Flagg, I think, is going to survive to lead another team. So, he's going to survive. Number three, Captain Boomerang. You know, for some reason, I could see this character sticking around for a lot of these movies. So, Captain Boomerang's my guess. Or he could just be killed off the first guy to die. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> number four, Bloodsport. Because he's being played by Idris Elba, you know, and and if they're getting Idris Elba, maybe they have a bigger role for him in the future or something. I don't know. But then again, they could get a big actor and then kill him off to be like, whoa, look at that. Oh, I didn't expect that, did you? Whoa. Uh, (laughs) Anyway, and uh, number five, I'm going to say Weasel just because, you know, to have someone kind of random and weird in there. So Weasel's going to survive, too. Uh. So, the Suicide Squad. I'm very excited for this. I love this team, and I I love that they just got this big group of Suicide Squad members, and I think James Gunn is just going to kill off a ton of them, which is great, because that's what the Suicide Squad should be about, you know? It should be doing that, cycling through tons of characters and stuff, and I, I can't wait for this movie. Number three, Venom. Let there be carnage. Carnage is hair, boys. Oh, yeah. Uh, I loved Venom. As I said earlier, I loved Venom, man. I thought it was a fantastic movie. I think that the the blending of the humor and the action and everything in that movie was just... It was so ridiculous. It was like slapstick, but also played it in a way where it it, it could take itself seriously enough. And it was so much fun fun. Tom Hardy is so wacky and weird in that role. He, his version of the character is not anything really like it is in the comics, but it is so much fun, and I really enjoy Tom Hardy in there. We're getting Carnage, played by Woody Harrelson. That is awesome, and I just, I hope the new director, I think uh, Andy Serkis, I think, is directing this movie. Uh, I hope the new director can capture the magic of the original movie. I know it was, again, it was so much mixed reviews, but I hope he captures the magic that I saw in that first movie and just have more of that awesomeness. I I loved Venom. It's so great, man. I should, I need to watch that movie again. You know, it's so good. Uh, My prediction for Venom is that they're going to tease Hobgoblin for the next villain. Mainly because I want Hobgoblin as a Venom villain. I think he would be a cool villain for a Venom movie. Number two... We got The Quiet Place 
2. This was, I think this was my number one most anticipated movie uh, for 2020. But of course, the, it, it was supposed to come out very shortly after COVID started and all that kind of stuff. And so it got bumped way up to this year sometime. So uh, <laughs> we'll see how... Th- Hopefully it comes out this year. Hopefully the government isn't too bad this year. But hey, when is the government ever good? Uh, <laughs> Alright, Quiet Place Part 2. Love the first movie. Such a fantastic, fantastic monster movie with a great central core concept of having to be quiet and all that kind of stuff. They do some really cool stuff with that. Really cool stuff with sound. Cool monsters. Great story. Great family dynamic that they got there. Really story focused, like character focused movie that's just all about this family. Fantastic. I loved it. Hopefully they they can carry this on in a great, great way. And man, I'm just, I'm so excited excited to see what comes next with this. My prediction is that The Quiet Place 2 will pick up immediately after the first film. So it's going to take up right when she's got that shotgun and all that stuff, just immediately after where the first film ends. Perhaps even showing the very end of the first film at the beginning of this movie. That's my prediction. I can't wait for this. This is going to be awesome. Number one, my most anticipated movie of the year. Spider-Man 3, a.k.a. Spider-Verse, it sounds like, because they're bringing back friggin' everybody, man. They're bringing back Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man, apparently. They're in talks with Tobey Maguire to bring him back as his version of Spider-Man, apparently. Uh, what's his name? Alfred Molina is coming back as Doc Ock. We got Jamie Foxx coming back as Electro. We got all these characters from other Spider-Man movies all coming together for what is probably, I assume, going to be the Spider-Verse, live-action Spider-Verse movie that we've always wanted, or I've always wanted. I always thought this would be amazing and so cool, and I'm so glad that it seems like that's what they're going for this time. Potentially, this could be a way that uh, this Peter Parker ends up in an alternate universe where he's not connected to the MCU movies anymore, and uh, that could be the way that they... uh, kind of separate him from the MCU and stuff like they were trying to do before this movie, actually. But either way, oh my goodness, I am so incredibly excited for Spider-Man 3 and everything that they're doing with this. Like, I was already excited. Spider-Man is my favorite character of all time, of, of you know, my favorite fictional character of all time. And so I was already excited for this movie, but then when they start hearing all this different stuff, it's like, oh my goodness, yes, bring it on. I can not wait. It's I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for Spider-Man 3. My prediction is that this is going to break the, oh, it has too many villains in a Spider-Man movie curse by the, you know, having the formation of the Sinister Six and by being a good movie that's well received as well. Uh, I, I, I cannot wait for this thing. I am so, so excited but, you know, every time that they make too many villains in a Spider-Man movie, you know, like, oh, Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, oh, man, it had too many villains. You had, you know, Electro, you had Green Goblin, you had all these, you know, too much, no, too much, too much. Okay, you know, Rhino's in there, oh, okay. Uh, Spider-Man 3 had Sandman, it had Venom, it had, you know, too much, too much, too much. It's like, okay, this time they're going to do too much and they're going to get it right and it's going to be great and it's not going to be too much and... I am so, so excited to see what this movie is going to be. What are your most anticipated movies of 2021? Leave them in the comments below. Love you guys. See ya.